Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. This is another Two Tokens podcast. And we are recording this time from Amsterdam, where we had the uh, roundtable session yesterday with people from all over Europe. And the subject matter was uh, challenges and opportunities of tokenization in Europe. And this is the uh, the 11th of May. We're recording this uh, after the uh, after the event. And in the studio today, we have Riddle and Code and Riddle and Code Energy Solutions, Sebastian Becker and Kai Seifert, who've been with the Energy uh, Token Working Group for the last year and were uh, present for the first time since the end of COVID at a physical Two Tokens Roundtable event. Welcome here, and it's great to have you uh, here in the studio. Thank uh, you. Thank yeah. you. Hi, Alex. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, so uh, we will uh, post this a little later. You know, the, uh, the uh, Kai uh, was uh, uh, also doing uh, something on the Roundtable yesterday. You were at the Energy Token Roundtable, exactly. I think. Exactly. You were at a uh, governance table, I think, right, with a lot of lawyers. That must have been fun. It was a lot of fun, basically. So we, uh, I think, it, it was not a very much commercially driven discussion, but a regulatory uh, influenced discussion. And uh, we commented on the current regulatory trends in Europe, which are, of course, quite crucial right now. Yeah. What was your uh, take on this? Because uh, this was your first roundtable as well, right? We met in Frankfurt at the Crypto Asset Conference. You told me all these crypto asset people, I'm not a techie, you know, but uh, with uh, with your background, how did you look at the event yesterday with all these different types of people there? Yes, an absolute essential event for me um, because it's uh, about time to bring together, um, you know, practitioners from all over Europe um, obviously, we've been down with our heads and the projects over the last, you know, uh, when it comes to real and code energy, at least five years. Um, and uh, yeah, well, it's about time to spread the word, you know, what, what, you know, what is good in terms of developing products in decent for decentralized energy markets, you know, where are the issues at the moment uh, that everyone is facing in its uh, EU member state. I think it was, it was a very good session. Um, it was a very, very open discussion. Yeah, everybody was bringing the, the challenges uh, straightforward to the table. And I also think it was a very creative environment in terms of, you know, uh, finding concrete next steps, how to tackle these issues. Yeah, yeah, th we tried to be hands on. And uh, that's why I enjoyed working with Whittle & Code in the last uh, 12, 14 months. You are very uh, hands on in everything you do. You are one of the pioneers of tokenizing energy assets in Europe, I might add. Maybe, uh, Sebastian, um, maybe you can give a little uh, pitch, a little uh, introduction to those of the people that don't know Riddle & Code, who you are, what you stand for, what your vision is. Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, we <clears throat> call ourselves the blockchain interface company, uh, and I think that's a good tagline because compared to uh, most of the blockchain projects out there and blockchain companies, we also do hardware solutions which is, of course, um, more complex, more difficult uh, to do, um, but it's essential, especially if we talk about critical infrastructure. It doesn't matter if it's energy or, in the future, self-driving cars and, and steering mobility. Uh, it's also true for the financial industry, for supply chains, wherever. You know, either dangerous goods or um, big values are, are moved um, along physical and digital value chains. Um, so for us, working on hardware means that we um, provide uh, trusted sources for data because we all know that in the blockchain space, once we store a set of data on the blockchain, it stays there forever. But unfortunately, this security, including the cryptography around blockchain, does not tell us a lot about the origin, uh, the accuracy and the trustworthiness of data. So. If we want to start uh, transactions, value transactions, data transactions, if we want to trigger and automate industrial processes based on certain um, if-then relationships, then we have to be absolutely um, secure uh, or sure that these data sets are coming from reliable sources, be it a self-driving vehicle, 
be it a smart meter in the energy sector, because otherwise most of our desires to reduce carbon footprint, for example, to, to zero or close to zero will, um, will not have a solid basis. So that's what we are working on and we are building the stack um, to enable all of this. So we are more, let's say, a base layer company and we want our clients and partners to build um, useful industrial applications and processes on top of what we provide as building blocks. That sounds like uh, you know, um, you know, an ambitious plan, but uh, I can't imagine that you're doing this for all the sectors in, in, in society. Uh, I know you're working uh, you know, on energy, and Kai has an, a background from green energy. Uh, what other sectors uh, do you uh, do you focus on? I mean, yeah, we, we developed um, fully audited and certified uh, backend solutions, professional trading solutions for the finance sector. So this includes digital asset management, tokenization solutions, and uh, custody of digital assets. Um, so that's one sector, uh, and it's not only about servicing the financial industry, but also to provide the underlying key management and the digital asset management uh, capabilities to the industry. Because you know, every bigger company um, that will use digital assets or tokens in the future will also require these technological capabilities. So that's not only a specific sector for us, <clears throat> but it's also an, an underlying capability for, for the other industries. And then the second focus is on the mobility sector I mentioned self-driving vehicles, uh, but of course we all know that this includes railway and potential also aviation um, industries. So our focus here is on um, the CANBUS data protocol and other data protocols and to make them into reliable data protocols and uh, to enable utilization of data on, on data markets in the future to enable new business models. And then our last sector basically is what we call materials. So it's a it's a mix of IoT and supply chain oriented projects. So we both digitize uh, different types of certificates that are legally required. Uh, we also tag products and components along the supply chain. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, that requires, let's say different also hardware form factors and, and a different type of notarization backend um, that in the end uh, and that's true for all three sectors, is again coupled with the financial backends to automate uh, transactions. Uh, oh. So settle, settlement is, is part of this equation, and um, we are fully agnostic if it comes to this, so we don't rely on a specific, um, let's say, cryptocurrency, for example, because technologi te technologically speaking, it doesn't matter if you settle something with a cryptocurrency or in the future with a digital euro, it's basically a digital key uh, that needs to be protected along its journey and life cycle. So, Kai, you know, as the name implies, Riddle & Code is a deep tech company, right? Very tech. -y, Absolutely. You know? uh, it's, I was never explained the name, by the way, but uh, what I really liked about, uh, you know, Wien Energy is that it was not deep tech. It was a consumer solution, right? Where you, Correct. Where, where society were seeing the fruits of tokenization and it didn't really matter what, what, what technology stack was underneath. Is that how it was also uh, positioned as a first test? I understand that in the summer of 21, you initiate the project uh, in, in Wien. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how was it received by, by, uh, by the Austrians? Yes, um, certainly, yeah, I'm glad to do that. So first of all, I think we need to distinguish between um, you know, two, two perspectives. Uh, the one perspective is um, a thorough understanding where the industry is heading and uh, what 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 is required in terms IT, of IT systems, and the other the other um, the other perspective is you know once you're convinced and and Wien Energy is indeed convinced that DLTs play a essential role in the future uh, uh, infrastructure uh, uh, of energy data exchange, um, how to do the first step, right? And and here um, it was very important um, that we uh, you know leverage the the very very good access to the customer from the Wien Energy and uh, um, produce a product that is under can be understood by everyone in Vienna right um, so to already today um, 
implement the infrastructure, do the first steps in infrastructure and technology implementation that can later on unleash really, really large potential of additional applications. And that's how it came to, um, you know, the uh, the description and, uh, and the invention of the product and, and the project in Vienna. So um, based on the energy tokenization tool set or platform called MyPower, um, which is um, basically enabling every user um, to tokenize an energy asset and then also um, um, receive the production and the, the value that is created by the asset in the form of a, of a second token, of a kilowatt hour token, of a utility token, um, to create a citizen power plant, a citizen-owned power plant, um, a further development from some existing very popular power plants in Vienna, um, which makes it much more easier for the for the for the customer to handle this, to 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 get them first first time ever a live view on the performance of this asset. You know, they can have a very nice pot, uh, very nice dashboard where they see what's happening in the current um, currently on the plant, and also telling them very transparently, um, you know, how much kilowatt hours they own, uh, they, they they've earned so far. Uh, also, which enabled uh, uh, the, the, the platform enabled Wien Energy to introduce a new dynamic um, reimbursement um, um, process. So, a customer will receive, um, you know, a minimum uh, return on investment. But if the sun is shining more intense and uh, the the power plant is uh, producing more, they will receive the upside dynamically uh, in their wallet, yeah? which we don't call wallet for the for the customer. This, in the same sense that we don't call this tokens or anything to do with blockchain. So that's just a hands-on, a very tangible and very popular uh, product. Yeah, so can you give me some numbers? How many clients were offered this, uh, this solution? You, you basically, sure. a client had to be a Wien Energy client and they yes. were directed to a web portal. How, how does that yes. process work? So, again, yes, absolutely. So we go step by step, right? Starting small in a, in a closer circle uh, and then opening the system up for, for other players. At the beginning, uh, obviously, um, it was focused on Wien Energy clients. And um, uh, Wien Energy tokenized uh, the largest uh, power plant uh, of Austria uh, with more than 11.5 uh, megawatt peak installed capacity and um, sold 5,000 tokens that represent um, roughly one panel, so 300 watt peak for 250 euro each to more than 1,000 customers. Huh. which are now uh, more more happy than ever because obviously um, they were, um, you know, investing into their future energy supply uh, they, because now they can um, have a credit or can deduct this kilowatt hours from the electricity bill, which is very valuable at the moment. As you know, the energy prices have been rising so that heavily. that makes it easy because they were already customers. The KYC had already been done. You had the bank exactly. accounts and everything. Yes. And instead of giving them money, you give them a discount on the on their energy bill. Correct. At the same time, obviously, um, um, you know the the investments are used to build new power yes. plants. So yeah, yeah. Um, and this is highly needed, especially in urban areas. So project developers know that um, that it's um, not the easiest thing, and, and not uh, you know uh, to do uh, you know to to install PV panels uh, in the urban areas. You know within within city boundaries, um, and um, that's therefore it's very uh, valuable for both sides so for the consumers but also for for the for the project developers wow huh. and what are the plans so this was a first yes. test right yes 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 and yes. it seems like it well it, you know it, it didn't fail so it must have been a success so you must have had have an additional plans absolutely so obviously we go step by step and then mm -hmm. always uh, decide uh, on you know expanding our services and products mm -hmm. based on the customer feedback so there was a very very um, 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 good feedback um, very very successful product and um, with and also based on the request that we, we receive from other players um, we very much uh, want to um, expand this platform as a, as a standalone uh, investment platform crowdfunding platform uh, for the Austrian market because it's not possible to do on the European level yet due yet. to different legislations yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, that we face. But at the end of the day, you know, um, um, Alex, I think it's important to see our vision behind that, right? So we just don't do that only to create a citizen power plants for the next 10 years, but um, obviously the vision of Riddle and Code Energy is based on this, you know, 
machine level layer zero technology that uh, Riddle and Code provides to us. Um, um, yeah, possibilities to um, develop the transaction infrastructure of the future decentralized energy markets, mm -hmm. right? So uh, based on machine wallets uh, that enable, um, in addition to the existing control and monitoring systems that are out there from the grid operators, from the energy, uh, from the energy suppliers, to build a, a transaction layer, to you know, to enable first time ever, um, you know, incentivation schemes, market based me market based mechanism for grid balancing, uh, and so on and so forth. So um, obviously, um, with providing this, um, we we want to unleash the the full value potential. Uh, of millions of assets that are already out there and are not unleashing their full value potential at the moment yeah, because mm -hmm. they have uh, decentralized energy or distributed energy sources, which clean energy is at, at the end of the day with the wind, you know, hydro and, and the PV. Um, they are facing uh, severe hurdles, you know, to get into the market and, and, and reveal their full potential. Uh, you know, finding the right size of an asset for, the, for, for every investor is very, very tough. Sometimes, you know, if you're a small investor, assets are too, 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 too large. You know? If you're a large investor, those assets are too small. You need to get a sizable, uh, to get a sizable project, an investment project. At the same time, the transparency is lacking for most of these players. They are not energy natives. Uh, they don't know how this market is functioning. So um, does this asset indeed exist? Is this asset indeed uh, the, the asset type uh, that is written on paper? And how does this asset perform? And is the value that it uh, that it uh, provides distributed uh, fairly? Those are questions that the players, the new players, the prosumers are faced with today. And at the same time, very often it's hard to, um, you also to to create a full uh, profit potential of this asset because um, um, you know the financing costs are too high uh, for especially for smaller assets. Um, and also it is hard for them to get access to the existing energy markets yeah, because. Uh, they are not made for the smaller assets. So everything, all of these challenges, uh, we want to tackle with the MyPower platform on the tool set of, uh, of real and code energy. And, and so MyPower, uh, that's, that's uh, you know, operational in Austria, right? And Correct. it's basically uh, democratizing shared assets, uh, right? Uh, uh, I, th I think the, uh, the dream uh, would be to have a kilowatt hour token at some point, right? That I could use my Tesla and uh, and just send uh, tokens uh, for energy, but there uh, is a lot of you know regulatory hurdles to pass. So that was also the approach for the uh, two tokens energy working group. Let's just do what is possible today. How do you see that? Is that something that is an ambition for my power as well, or is it mainly focused on shared asset? Oh, I would say that's uh, one of the main uh, targets of us uh, in the in the coming twelve to twenty four months. Um, we already uh, closed actually the loop from the uh, investment and asset uh, asset tokenization side to the um, you know electricity offtake side because uh, our next feature is a peer to peer energy trading feature which is fully uh, fully in line and fully um, compliant to uh, energy and financial market regulation in Austria uh, where we integrate into the smart meter infrastructure of the end consumers so you don't have only the asset providing you know euro but we can track the kilowatt hour itself, the product itself, through the system. And, and, and basically... So how do you do that? Do you, you, do you tag the kilowatt hours with energy tag uh, type technology? Or? Well, as Sebastian said, everything starts with a machine identity. Thank so you. we're very, very happy um, to work, to, uh, you know, to have, um, to build on the base of, of I think, um, a global leader in terms of, of machine identities. Um, Riddle and Code is uh, providing hardware-based machine identity and this identity signs every transaction. Uh, so you have this um, um, also hardened data, which will never be you know, openly revealed through the whole system, um, um, running into registers where you can obviously um, then trace every transaction. Uh, and then this can be used for, for all of the diff different kind of use cases. Yeah. So. so you're an Austrian company. You know, uh, Germany used to be the leader in solar energy, Sebastian. You're, you're, you're German. You're in, in Munich, I think. H how Kai is also German. Kai is also German. Oh, Indeed. Okay. But, okay. It's a secret, but yes. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, um, yeah, legislation is different in every European country, right? So we all know that. So that's, uh, that's why we need to come together as, as Europeans 
and see that we, after the European energy law that was passed uh, last year and that is being implemented, that we also come to some common language and common European standards so that not only can we implement my power in Austria, uh, that we can also apply it in different countries. And I'm glad to say that we have a very European coalition here, right? Uh, we are here in the Netherlands, uh, people from uh, Rome, Italy, Spain have uh, approached us and are part of the group. But how do you see uh, that a role for two tokens and particularly you know, what you are doing to come to a European understanding uh, a coalition of the willing? Do you have any what are your views on that, Sebastian? Yeah, I think it's important to to zoom out a little bit. You know, Kai explained the solution as we have implemented it in in Austria, uh, and as said, we we still have this regulatory patchwork across Europe. Uh, and additionally, it's not only that we have different energy regulations in different countries, but we also are connecting or bridging the gap between different industries. So mobility and energy will come together at charging point. Um, energy and the financial markets need to come closer together. So you also have cross-sectoral regulation, which makes it more difficult to establish end-to-end -end, mm -hmm. uh, regulatory compliance systems. As a, as I said, base layer company, we um, are focusing on providing the tools to allow our customers and partners to build regulatory compliance solutions and to roll them out regardless of the details of the local or regional regulation. So that's one thing in ensuring this regulatory compliancy tools and audit trails and everything else is, let's say, important groundwork that also hopefully um, helps to underpin, uh, you know, to tokens activities and, and other European activities uh, where we are part of. Uh, then secondly, we need to focus on the capabilities. Uh, so we were talking about uh, the, to the tokens uh, and, and the, the, the voucher type utility tokens that we deployed in Austria. But basically, we should look at them and as tools to incentivize um, desired behaviors. So desired by society or desired um, to reach certain um, goals in an industry, like you know, getting carbon neutral in 10, 15 years. Um, so we, we need to use gamification and, and uh, game, game theory approaches um, to accelerate this transition. And, and, and that's also where I see uh, a big opportunity for um, a group of companies coming together under the umbrella of two tokens to discuss and establish uh, certain pieces of the puzzle that can be then deployed for the benefit of Europe, not only to reach these goals, but also to embed our democratic values into these systems, because blockchain is a backend system. Uh, we have the smart contract layer, basically, Blockchain is a, is a technology to automate things, uh, but to also fix the governance, how things are automated. Uh, and that's why we focus on, on machines signing data so that we can make sure this data is accurate, that we don't run again into a diesel scandal situation where the data that should come from regulated players are faked. Uh, so that must be prevented, uh, especially if we not only automate the flow of data, but uh, connect data to settlements. It, it would not be acceptable for the European industries to be, let's say, regulated based on CO2 footprints, which would mean, you know, hitting the bottom line if these data uh, could, be, could be faked or tweaked. Uh, and we have end-to-end -end value chains. We all see that right now in the chip crisis. It will be very important to understand where do things come from, what's the provenance of the associated metadata, including energy, CO2 footprints, uh, material composition of, of physical products. Uh, so that's where we all have a role, uh, and that's also what we need to educate um, decision makers, regulators, and others about, because right now we see a tendency that regulating the new crypto and digital asset space is trying to follow the patterns of, let's say, the old regulation. But as said, this technology is building bridges. It uh, incorporates in itself a lot of regulatory tools, let's put it that way. Uh, so we need to regulate differently. And people still lack the understanding uh, of how this uh, technology can be used for the benefit of society. Uh, just look at the European discussion right now. People um, pick up the media, um, let's say, um, 
the, headlines, the yeah. media coverage and the yeah. headlines about the the uh, big oh, the uh, bad news is interesting the the energy consumption yeah. Of, yeah. of of bitcoin for example instead of looking at tokenization as a tool to to drive um, Europe to reach the goals that we need to set for ourselves. Yeah, the, the, the problem I see is that uh, we have a lot of educated people and a lot of people are familiar with, uh, you know, the technologies that were built in the second industrial revolution in the last 30 years. But uh, this next transition is a lot harder. This decentralized economy or Web3, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's very difficult for, for, for a lot of people to comprehend. And so that's been the mission and the mandate for the, the Two Tokens Foundation to, to show how it works in real life, not only inform them, you know, it's easy to do a masterclass and to inform yourself, but to get inspired and to see how this might work for your own situation that's a whole different ballgame. And so the and because this is such a cross sector uh, 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 beast, if you will, right, where you have legal regulatory people, all the lawyers, we have the finance and the fintech people and the particular industry. And not alone does the technology underneath, uh, it's, it's, it, that makes it a very uh, interesting cocktail. And so you know, you know Riddle and Code being uh, the pioneer in this uh, and a European uh, player, per, you know, uh, it, 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 I like what you do in terms of having this core technology, but at the same time showing the value of a consumer application with my power at Wien Energy. You know, can we expect more of that? And how can we help at Two Tokens to to launch some of these? Uh, because we, I, I'm convinced, and we see that with our roundtable discussions and the many people that work within Two Tokens, if we show end user value, if we show why your mother should be using this, uh, it, it becomes uh, you know, a self-fulfilling prophecy because if people understand the value and understand how it works, it will help adoption. Yeah, sure, there, there will be more of that, no doubt. And, you know, often there's the criticism that apart from cryptocurrency or NFT speculation, the uh, blockchain industry wouldn't have produced productive use cases. Uh, but we have to say that many big players are working uh, for years uh, on their blockchain strategy and on blockchain adoption. You don't read a lot of this in the press because it's under NDA. Um, because big corporates need to wait until the regulatory landscape is fixed, basically, only then they can deploy. Uh, so if we take the Austrian example, we, we had to design the tokens in a way that they are uh, can be categorized as a voucher system, because that's also already existing from a legal standpoint. Uh, so if you, if you hit that category, um, then, then you can deploy something. But for these end-to-end -end settlements uh, across industrial supply chains, for example, you need a clear regulation like the MICA regime being finalized. Uh, in our case, it, it was really quite, quite helpful uh, because you know, we are a horizontal provider of technology and we need the, the vertical and domain know-how of partners and, and clients such as Wien Energy. And I think the, the journey together with Wien Energy has been quite or can be taken as a potential role model. We started with the first smallish POC in 2017. Then we uh, continued with a Austrian state-funded uh, project for for peer-to-peer -peer energy communities, and and then we decided on a three years roadmap that ended up uh, setting up a 50/50 joint venture, which uh, Ritland Code Energy Solutions is run by both companies, and looking at international internationalization of of the platform. Um, and I think also Two Tokens has the big potential to to form these kinds of partnerships, either bilaterally between members or uh, within the group, uh, so that early adopters of the technology, and it's clear that the banking sector is most advanced, energy sector most likely uh, second, supply chain uh, third, and, and then the rest, uh, automotive, will need a bit of time. It kind of depends what country in Europe you're in. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? I think Germany yeah. automotive might be first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, but, you know, we have to, again, uh, zoom out a little bit. What is um, what is the European value proposition? We are very strong if it comes to machinery and complex products. Um, we don't have the, let's say, the level of wages to, to become a service economy, except maybe for, you know, 
occasional market positioning as UK and Switzerland for financial markets. But we have to do something for the European industry and, and we need to make it more resilient. We need to reach the, the carbon um, footprint reduction goals. So we have to provide the tools uh, to protect, um, not only protect the current industri industrial value pro production, but to ensure that tomorrow's value creation uh, will be more compliant with the needs of nature of our societies, etc. And that's where blockchain can play a perfect role. Yeah. You're also the president of another initiative. Can you uh, give us a few words on that and why Two Tokens is uh, working with them? Um, yeah, there are a couple of initiatives. So I'm I'm the president of the Interplanetary Database Association, a Berlin-based um, associ association that is focusing on the research of uh, governance structures in blockchains. We are also governing uh, the code base of a, let's say blockchain slash database metadata metadata oriented stack because that's also a capability that is is will be highly needed uh, for industrial. Um, projects. So that's also a non-for-profit association where different users of, of this technology uh, come together, uh, work on projects uh, and assess the governance opportunities. Uh, of course, you know, when the first regulation is now kicking in or, or has been finalized, uh, then I think the, the discussion around governance will accelerate because in the end it's, it's the essence of it. So we need to see a smart contract reg regulation in different industries um, and, and not worry any longer about the underlying technological building blocks or so regulating wallets. I'm not sure if this is the best use of, uh, let's say, our time to worry about the containers. We need to talk about what is done with them. Uh, and that's uh, I, I think that should be the fo focal point of regulation and also as a board member of uh, INATBA, the European uh, Association for, for, let's say, useful blockchain applications. Uh, we are also trying to educate the public uh, and we see that there's still a lack of understanding on the level of decision makers uh, in, in European and national parliaments, so educating politicians. We all know they, they have a lot to do and don't have enough time. They don't have a a uh, diploma to understand all the little uh, bits and pieces of, of blockchain technology and other technologies, but we need to provide them with um, the, the backgrounds and, and the, the picture to the left and to the right so that they can make informed decisions. Um, and right now, because regulation is underway in, in many different areas, uh, not only in the financial sector, uh, it is high time to accelerate that discussion and to um, not leave it to the big players again to influence this field. So, you know, blockchain industry consists of big players, specialized small vendors, um, and of course the, the public bodies uh, as well. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, gentlemen. You know, it's been uh, an honor having you here. I hope you uh, you enjoyed uh, the round table yesterday. Um, the, you know, the, the key takeaways yesterday and actually, we talk about legal regulatory a lot. Uh, one of the tables uh, had a key takeaway, and it is, they said, ignore the law. <laughs> that was quite refreshing to hear that, that uh, if you want innovation, you need to sometimes just do it and ask uh, and uh, uh, don't ask for permission, but uh, say sorry afterwards. I'm not sure if I fully agree with that, but for some innovations uh, and proof of concepts, you do need to move forward. I, th I think it was more a mental construct yesterday to to um, you know bring a fresh point to this discussion. So it was not the opinion of of the table. No, uh, eh? <laughs> um, but we all said you know um, either we come up with regulation and laws that everybody can comply to, otherwise we risk that players from Asia, the Americas, just ignore the European discussion, um, grow until they reach the size of Facebook. And, and then they, of course, have enough funds to, to heavily influence the regulation. So we, we should have a, a bottom-up discussion and an approach that understands the needs of the different industries, because blockchain you know, is not asking for an exemption. 
uh, it's not even you know a, a technology that comes with a clear set of applications. It's really a base layer technology, and we need to make blockchain in the back end uh, use AI and other technologies that are much closer to the application level. Uh, and and this end to end understanding certainly is not where it needs to be. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, and from where you're sitting, being you know a baseline technology company, it's clear to talk that way. But at the same time, I also have to be a little bit uh, um, uh, strict, right? Because it's because of us techies mm -hmm. that many people in society kind of lost what we're doing. And so unless we change the narrative and start talking in terms of end user value and what's problems we solve, you know, um, people are not going to uh, comprehend and appreciate what it is that we do. And yes, whether you use blockchain or machine learning or deep tech or whatever, in the end, they are just an, uh, technologies to make uh, things work. We need to always ask ourselves the bigger question, you know, how is this going to add value to society as a whole? And, and what problem do we solve? Because if we keep this the domain of the techies and the early adopters, we will never get to full-fledged mass adoption. Yes, yeah. maybe um, also summarizing that and taking the middle ground on this discussion from my side. Um, um, I just want to say that um, this complicatedness that we just, uh, you know, um, you know, um, cre and s talked about, um, it's not, it's not a necessary, it's not a necessary um, way to look at it. Um, I like the way of uh, how um, the technology revolution in the energy generation uh, segment, namely with the invention, you know, of um, very efficient wind power plants, large wind power plants, as photovoltaics, and so on and so forth. Um, new new battery systems um, is basically bringing in new players to the game, right? New owners of energy generation assets, new energy entrepreneurs, and these guys by nature are distributed, right? And for them, they understand much much better what the value of a distributed ledger is. Yeah, it's answering for them. They don't even have to ask the question: Where will the data be stored? You know, who is responsible for governing this? Because they are in charge, and we just want to give them the opportunities and the tools to be in charge and to make it as easy as possible. And I think when we stick to describing these use cases from distributed energy to distributed ledger, it becomes quite, um, uh, yeah, better to understand. Um, the necessities of our technology and how you can apply them to the biggest advantage. I full heartedly agree uh, because in, we are in, uh, in, in roaring times, if you will, right? I think there's still a war going on in the East. You know, we have an energy crisis, we have a climate crisis, we may have huge inflation ahead of us, so there's a lot of things that, that need fixing. And if we can only solve, you know, a, a small percentage of that with the solutions that we build, I think that would be success. That could be defined as success. And I think that is what we all have to keep in mind. Yeah, sure. But I think we, we see it already. Uh, and I think we both agree, not only because we collaborate in two tokens, that educating the decision makers uh, is the top priority because they make decisions that will affect uh, the, the the innovation power of, of our industries and then Kai gave the great example of the B2C offering in Vienna you know it's not a trial it's a commercial rollout and uh, what is sold there is invest in sun packages that's kind of the claim uh, so people invest 250 euros or a multiplicator of that into a sun package and and uh, of course they immediately get um, what kind of an opportunity this is. They don't own a garden or they don't own a house. They don't have a roof, so they could not install yeah. a photovoltaic plant, but they can invest in it now. Um, and once the regulatory landscape is clear and once managers and decision makers and regulators are aligned on these goals, then uh, it will be easy, uh, just as we did in, in Austria, to come up with a an easy to understand um, consumer packaging and, and, and bundling. Uh, but we need the tools uh, and we need to pay attention that the regulators don't regulate them away before they can unfold their influence. I think we're influence. going to be doing a lot of fun stuff in the next year. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely.
good things in the making good things in the making and by all means let's you know have our european voice heard and uh, let's uh, let's do it thank you for being here uh, this was the two tokens podcast you know we you know you can listen to us in, in your favorite podcast app every two weeks we post a new session and uh, look forward to uh, some of our new activities and new reports to be published especially the one that we're doing in the energy token group and look forward to uh, posting the next one soon thank you thank you alex bye bye that was it for today's podcast. Thank you for listening in and please subscribe so you don't miss out on our upcoming episodes. If you want to get in touch with us, you can find our contact details at www.twotokens.org.